There we go. All right. Let's make it happen. Hello, everybody. It's Danny and Wanda from Deep South Homestead. And I'm trying to get this all... He sits and laughs at me. He don't he don't talk. He sits and laughs because I don't get it all just right. Yeah. And when I finally do, then he he starts talking. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we got people in here from everywhere tonight. Let's see here. Yeah. They they come in to see. Hmm. All see 50 who's states at the table. I just like. subscribed and I am I the winner or a winner? <laughs> am I a winner or a wiener? I don't know. I don't know. We're glad you subscribed anyway. Um, Good Lord. Oh, so what are we doing here tonight? I don't know. I got to see what YouTube done. Uh-oh. Did YouTube do something? Oh, it sent me a notification that we live. I don't oh, ever get notifications that we live. It notified us that we're live. Wow. Wow. This is a first. I've never heard of that. I'm like... Okay, so why do I get a notification to my own live all of We're a sudden? alive. <laughs> We're alive. Oh. All right. I used to sing a gospel song called He's Alive. I know. It's a beautiful it's song. A beautiful song. Beautiful song. And it's coming up uh, Easter, Easter weekend. And, and I sang it. Matter of fact, people sing I sang it at an Easter cantata one time. Yeah. Called He's Alive. It's a beautiful song. Beautiful, a beautiful song. song. I don't know if anybody knows the song, but. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. Um, um, so, we have not hit the 300,000 yet. We like a little over 200 people. So, tonight we're going to be giving away a bunch of books. We've got a lot of uh, some of our subscribers that have sent us some books to give away. And so, that's what we're going to do tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, next weekend, if the, we can get the 200 in a week... I, the I way don't know. It, the I way YouTube know. does things, I may be here six months yeah. trying to get 200 people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's for sure. But um. if we hit 300,000 before next weekend, that will be our big finale. We will be giving away a Denali pressure canner. Oh, I thought you were thinking of Denali. I was thinking to say, <laughs> I want one! <laughs> That would be nice. That'd be if, nice. A nice Denali truck would be nice. <laughs> no, pressure canner. Okay. Um, a box of canning goods. We're going to give away a box of Miss Lippy's uh, blends. Um, a Vego garden bed. Uh, yes. Uh, what else? One of, I, I have two. I think I have three, but one of my cookbooks is going over to Patreon, and two of them... Here, that will be part of the finale. A trio of Danny's books, some Danny corn, some yellow wax beans. I don't know. We may find. We're a blessing few other a things. lot of people. It sounds like. Well, some people just give one person something. Right. And so I've been trying for the last three or four weeks. We've been giving away all kinds of things, seeds and everything else, and we're going to continue. And the books tonight yes so um i know a lot of people want carla emery's um encyclopedia of country y'all gotta excuse living. me because i got all my she's got all her stuff over out of her paraphernalia right if you here. want to call it that now this is danny and i's probably number one this is one of our number one books if you want to know anything it is in here this woman spent her life writing this book and and marketing it and uh y'all can tell it's thick uh name something that you want to learn and i guarantee you it's in here somewhere yeah it's, whether it's herbs uh one lady i did not even realize that was it it was in here till she said it one lady said i hope i never have to deliver a baby but it would be good to have a little bit of advice and uh i think that's in here too yep um <laughs> I'm talking anything from delivering animals, uh, plants, cooking, canning. It's all building, there. Building animal pens, building houses, building, digging, hunting water. Uh, I mean, it don't matter. It's in this book. So I know a lot of you guys would like to have it. Miss Lippy's putting up the link for it if you want to order it. But we're going to be blessing a few people later on tonight. So... Hang around and see if you win one of these. I gave one away already on Patreon, and 
uh, I think I, I don't know. I wrote the num name down. I forgot what it was. But anyway, they've already contacted me, and theirs will go out next week. Uh, so this is probably our number one. Oh, I know where the name is. Hold on. Seven Acre Pond. Seven Acre Pond won a book from yes. Carl Emery over on yes. Patreon. So we're going to be giving away a few other things. But what did you do this week? Oh, what Nothing. have I done this week? <laughs> I mainly, uh, I've been gardening this week. Uh, getting ready, getting a lot of uh, containers ready, raised beds ready, uh, sticking plants in the ground, uh, fighting off raccoons and possums and... Uh, been quite successful at that, my, as a matter of fact. I've gotten rid of several so far. Uh, deer, been dealing with deer, you know? Oh, he, he, in the Vego beds, the metal raised beds that we got, he put two in the middle and he told you he would tell you later what it, what he was putting in it, or have I even not put that video up? I don't even I don't remember. I, you, I no, you track. haven't put that video up. Okay. Not that I'm aware of, anyway. With the trellis? No, you have not put that video up. Or, or have you? Have I put the video on okay. Pecan Grove with Guys, the trellis? Guys, those of you who are subscribed <laughs> to Pecan Grove, have we put the video up with the Vago trellis? Trellis. I, I see so much stuff. I and don't I remember. And I edit so much, and, I, and I, we've been busy. I yes. just Let's just say we have been so busy. There's so many things that we don't put <clears> on... Deep South or Pecan Grove. And Danny and I busted every day doing all kinds of things. Since I got to where I feel a whole lot better, we have double timed it to make up for when I wasn't yeah. feeling good. So uh, Let's see here. Sheila D. says, How are the ponds at Deep South after this rain? Well, we only got a little over an inch. So we didn't hardly get any rain. It didn't really didn't really do anything they might have come up a couple of inches but that was about it so we uh we missed all this hyped up bad weather everybody kept talking about it just it just never come to fruition let's go down to the bottom and see if anybody's answered about the what we just asked uh yes i did put it up see i told you i thought i did okay okay so okay what it was we told me we had a surprise we was going to put in there i remember now now that's the video we got to make <laughs> yes that's the video we have to make we have we have put it in there okay we... so no let me tell you a little about the danny's delayed christmas present that came this week uh, oh yes um I, it was probably you a... ordered that before christmas yeah, way the before first Christmas. of December. Yeah, I, Danny had told me he he loved Japanese maple trees, so I went online and tried to find a, a supplier, a reputable supplier of Japanese maple trees, and I finally found a company and I ordered two. Well, I got sick. Danny got sick. I kind of yeah. forgot about it. Not, they didn't show up at Christmas. And it was probably sometime late in January when I thought about them again. Yeah, we thought about them again. It's like, and I said, okay, your Christmas present didn't arrive. Let me go look. And when I went on the site, I failed to look. They don't ship till it's time to plant them in our area. So I kind of forgot about it again. And one day this week, and y'all don't ask me the name of the company because I don't remember. But uh, I might can find it in my phone in a minute. Yeah. But... I got an email saying they had shipped Danny's two Japanese maples. The other night, was it pouring down raining? Oh. Uh, no. No, it was... It, uh, was, it was not the night it was raining. It was raining. not the night that it, that it rained. It was probably 7 o'clock. Uh, it was after 7. Yeah, it was When late. you got the notification. I got a notification that it had been delivered. And I'm like, nobody came. We ain't got nothing. So we ain't got nothing here. So... And, I finally I went in and they take pictures. And I said, oh, it's at the gate. Yep. They put it by the gate. So. I had already got undressed and was in. Danny said, I'm not going tonight. I said, I'm not going up to the gate tonight. You know, I'm just and I not going to do I'll it. I said, I'll do it. Yeah. So I took off up to the gate and I had to wrestle that thing in my car because I took my car and put it in the back of my car and had to leave the trunk open and go back up to the house. And when I got up there, I took it out and I said, Danny, they don't know how to read. And he said, what do you mean? It says, this end up. 
this end was this way. Right. And uh, some of the dirt was out of it. Oh, they they had the trees. The box said this side up, and they had them turned upside down. <laughs> Luckily, the the pots was three gallon pots, and they came with a plastic bag with a zip thing around it. Look, it just wasn't doing anything where I had it planted, and it was under some big trees. And he said it's never gonna do anything never gonna unless do anything we cut there. the trees down. Yeah. And we didn't want to cut the big trees, so he went and put it over at Pecan Grove with an open area. I hope it'll live. <laughs> I hope it makes it. I hope it so makes it. So the ginkgo turns yellow. Your now the only thing turns everybody red. says we're frozen and we're buffering. Oh, we're. Oh, uh, did we say something wrong? I don't know. What's controversial about a tree? Uh, froze up. They said what? What's going on? It ain't notifying us. No, it's. Let me see. Um. This one's one of these minimizing. YouTube is not receiving enough smooth streaming. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, they okay. said good now. Okay, it's okay. all good now. Okay. Maybe it came back? Maybe so. Put it up anyway. Okay, we'll try. All right. Um, okay, we're back, we're back okay, good now. Okay, so. Must have been. Um, Ginkgo is one of the oldest trees in the world. Thank you, Hills Mills. I got a message, y'all. I keep forgetting. Yeah. All week I keep saying I'm a message. Well, the them, the problem is with the problem with the ginkgo is we don't know if we have a male or a female yeah. tree. One of them smells like dog dookie. <laughs> That's the male. I don't know which one it is, <laughs> but one of them smells horrible. And we don't want and the we don't, horrible. We don't want the horrible one. I was working at a lawyer's house and there was this big beautiful ginkgo tree out there and I kept saying, God, what is that smell? And he goes, it's that dead gum tree. He said, but my wife won't let me cut it down. You know, so. <laughs> Will be cool says, looks good in McHenry. Good. Thank you. He says it's also turning cool in McHenry. It was turning cool this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm it's just... turning cool here at Deep South Homestead, too. Yeah. Well, it it didn't drop but, what, four or five degrees? But the wind, the, wind. the cool in the night was cooling it down. Uh, uh, the one says female, yeah, one, one says, says male. male. Uh, <laughs> we still don't know. I still don't know. That's it. Um, um, female, okay. Uh, Ellen Beth Botanical says the female ginkgo smells. Oh. Well, let's hope we got Leave the... it to be a female, I guess, to make it stink. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> I had to say that, you know. Me. I knew you. If it was gonna be female, I knew you were gonna oh, say that. Oh, okay. But anyway, the trees look. His Japanese maples look awesome. So we'll have some red there. Yellow, oh no, Eve and... Evelyn said that she heard that ginkgos can change sexes. So we may have a transgender <laughs> tree. <laughs> oh, oh no! Oh my goodness! Oh man! Anyway, uh, we just you know, guys, we everybody kept. Uh, hyping up about all the bad weather and all that stuff, and, and I'm thankful that didn't nothing happen here. But it just, it just we rained. We got some good heavy rain one time. One time it rained pretty hard, but we, no lightning. Nope, no thunder, thunder and lightning, nothing like no that. No tornadoes. That was great. Um, but above us, I oh mean, now above just us, barely above us. My daughters, <laughs> where got, they live, uh, one of them owns a house. Uh, outside of Columbia, but she doesn't live there, but she owns a house there. She used to live there. The um, tornado runs where that house is, runs on the other side of the highway from Summerall, where they live now, and it runs up through Hattiesburg, and it hits that same pattern every time. Every time. Oh, everybody says, oh, my trans tree, get out of here. Laugh to go with our transgender beans. Yeah. Uh, oh. All right, so... What else you been doing? Okay, it says, Debunker says, males have less limbs and they are exactly across from each other. Okay, we'll have to check that out then. I'll have to look. Okay, we'll just have to see. Old Dominion said their basement is now a pond. So I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing y'all got a lot of rain and you don't have a sump pump. Uh, you know, so I'm, there's a lot of things there I can, or drain I, can, or something. I can read into that, you know. But we're thankful. We I mean, we got just enough rain. To really water the gardens good, because I prayed. I ain't gonna lie to you. When it starts coming up a storm, I pray. Yeah, I'm like, we Lord, did. 
We don't um, need no bad weather. We don't need <laughs> no flooding down rains. We just need some good, gentle rains. And that's just about what we got yep. was just good, gentle rain. And Lippy was sending me messages, but I left my phone in the house. And we were out doing we were, stuff. I was out riding. Betty was riding around on the Ranger. I don't know what all you were doing. You went off. I was checking off. Stuff. I was checking stuff, riding around the property, checking. I was watching the skies. And I said, when I you know, finally got back in and looked at my phone, I'm like, it ain't even raining. And she's sending me tornado watches and warnings and stuff. And I'm like, uh oh. And so I started messaging my kids, and they're like, we're okay, we're okay. It was across the highway, no, no big deal. And I'm like, okay. And then they're like six or eight miles from where it was going through. But right. I don't think anybody had any severe I, we damage. We haven't heard there. of any massive damage. So I anywhere. think it was okay. Um, Jersey girl said they're getting the bad weather now. Oh. So. Um, oh, but any, you know, I mean, we this week's been a really, really busy week over at Pecan Grove. Uh, I'm sad to say. But I had to replant my Danny corn, and uh, the reason <laughs> the reason was the planter was not putting out the seeds that it should have been putting out. It's not that it wasn't coming up. But the he planter, has one row that's perfect. I have one row. The first row I planted was perfect, and then for, after that there was big skips all in it everywhere. And I, I he thinks either two kernels got hung up or or something. Something happened in the seed plate that kept them from falling out. I don't know what happened. I didn't have the I readjusted the uh, the rear tail wheel on it. I think the, the tail wheel might have been a little bit up too much, and it wasn't clacking it like it was supposed to be clicking it to throw the seeds out. So I actually went back and uh, we uh, you know we replanted and I made sure because I watched to see the seeds falling out of it. Okay, Sheila D says, Danny, will we have frost in next week in Perkinson? The answer should be no. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> we've Inside sources has told me that we'll not have any more frost until next year, but or, or late this fall. But we have uh, some 38 and 39 degree temperatures coming, but it usually doesn't frost at that. Uh, so I'm not really that concerned about it. Okay, so I want to uh, give one book away right now. Um, this book. Mm. Oh, this is a nice book. It's called The Bible Memory Plan for Women. And Abama Gardner is in here tonight, and uh, she has been dealing with cancer and going through treatments. And we want to bless Abama Gardner with this book. So just hey, send me your Abama address. Abama Gardner, Lou. send us your address. Send me your address, Lou, and we will send that out to you. Um, so that's one that we wanted to give away tonight. Yeah. Um, what size uh, round bales do you buy, Aston for tractor lift capacity? Okay, um, is that Monkey Food Garden? Yes. Uh, Monkey Food Garden, I buy the five foot round bales. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't see any need. They waste enough as it is with a round bale, um, so I, I just stick with the five foot because that's what most of the people around here wrap. And, and wind up as the five foot. Very few people around here even do the six foot bales. Uh, it's just. Yeah, y'all continue to pray for Lou, uh, Abama Gardner. And uh, she usually is in our chat pretty regular. We've met her in person. She's She came to my canon class. She came to your canon class, yeah. yeah. And uh, so we, we kind of know who she is, but I thought I would bless her with the book tonight. Okay, Randy Pitts. Danny, what is the best direction to orient a greenhouse in? North, south, east, or west? Well, Randy, a lot of it depends on where you live at and uh, what kind of weather conditions you have. Now, us living 30 miles north of the Mississippi Gulf Coast, we like to position ours uh, northeast to southwest or northwest to south east based on hurricanes that's what we base all of ours on because going with those directions you get about 60 the the, un, the sun you get about a 60 degree angle on the sun which actually uh is really good because you don't want too little sun on the greenhouse and you don't want too much sun on it because if you get too much it gets too hot if you get too little everything gets tall and spindly so 
it's a it's a toss up. You just it depends on where you live at in the country. So Abama Gardner says she's crying. Thanks everyone. Girl, we've been praying for you for a long time. So yep. We hope everything works out, but we are sending you a book so that maybe you'll have something to read on occasion. Um, okay. Let's oh, he's see. asking somebody else. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, so. Where are we at here? It I'm keeps trying, jumping around well, here. I'm trying to do it slow because I'm. Um, okay. All right. I can't. I'm, I'm so far away from it. I have to. All right. Okay. The Rusty Spigot says, oh, my goodness, there was a canon class. I live in past Christian now. I would love a canon class. That was what? Oh, gosh, that was three years ago, maybe two or three years ago. You've had at least you've three. had two of them. Yeah, I had two different canon classes. Yeah. And uh, that was at least three years ago. Um, I just didn't have any more because, number one, Danny keeps me busy. And planning a canon class, and and it's all day. I do an all day canon class when I do it, and we do both pressure and water bath canon. I know one time, the second time, I think we might have just did pressure canon. I can't remember, um, but we make a full day of it. Okay, Becky Hansen says, "Do you use a water filter at your place? And if you do, what kind is it?" Uh, no, we do not use a water filter here. We are on a well. Um, we our, do have a, but we do have a an Alexa Pure uh, from my Patriot Supply. There's a link in our description down below where you can get one. We actually have several of their. We have the water, picture. The, we have the picture one. We have and the then, big stainless one that stands up, just in case, because we, as we've told y'all, there is some events coming uh, with the water, and you really need to have your water purification systems in order whenever this type of event takes place. All right, what type of pota potatoes do you plant? They ordered German butter balls and purple. Okay, that's Rebecca H. What type of potatoes do you plant? I've ordered German butter ball and purple Vikings. Uh, we tried the German butter balls. They were way too starchy for us. Uh, you make a, uh, a bowl of uh, a mashed potato, <coughs> excuse me, mashed potatoes, and Man, it's like you could pick the whole bowl up with a spoon, you know, because there German was, butter balls are not made for They're not made potatoes. for mashed potatoes, I can tell you. <laughs> but now the purple Vikings, we did not grow uh we we grew we the purple majesties. Yeah, we haven't tried that. <clears throat> haven't tried the purple Vikings. I, I don't really know about that one. Um, now the purple majesties were really good. Tracy asked, Have I ever canned greens? I'm still picking and but the freezer's getting full. I did some greens yesterday. Uh, yeah. I did a lot of my greens because we are starting to get a few aphids. So I ran out and said, okay, they ain't no bugs getting my food. And so I, I put mine in the freezer yesterday, but I have canned them before and they work in the canner, but you have to go, I think, 90 minutes. And so it pretty much makes them real mushy, but that, I mean, they're still good. I've done cabbage, mm -hmm. greens, Kale, I think that all of that in in a can, in a jar, and it, it is good. It's just a little bit more mushy than most people would like. Okay, hold on. Where you want to go? I'm sitting here looking at me real too real. It says I am looking to buy a farm, and today I viewed a 40 acre farm. It's sandy loom. Farmer said lots of sand in soil. Is sandy loom okay? It has a gravel pit Ooh. on it too. Uh, <clears throat> me real too real. Uh, there sandy loom soil is actually pretty good to be honest with you. The only I'm gonna tell you some things now because deep south here is the same way. It's sandy loom. Uh, things dry out pretty quick. Uh, nutrients kind of leach into the soil pretty quick. But after a rain, you can you can work your soil really rapidly, and the fact that it has a gravel pit on it is a plus also. Uh, <laughs> spoiled, rotten. Okay. Running around, uh, playing. Every time we go over there, they're just bouncing. Yeah, they're bouncing around. All Let's right. see here. They're saying it's buffering again. Bounce okay. down so we can see if we're back or not. Um. Come on. Let me have that. You, you're right. going to mess up. Well, at least I up. can see it now. No, we don't want that. All right. Uh, back again. They say. Okay, so we're back. 
What is the difference between the Kubota B and L series? That's Norma. Oh, they're both compact tractors. One's a subcompact and the other one's just a compact. I mean, frames on them are a little bit different. Lift capacities are a little bit different. I mean, there's it's it's it depends on what you're looking for. I have both. Uh, I have the L series. Is what I have. Uh, now I will tell you this: the the uh, the L2510 is a lot bigger and a lot heavier duty tractor than the L2610 ever thought about being. Uh, I actually have both of those, and my, my 2510 will outdo my 26 2 to 1. I mean, it's just, it's a way bigger tractor. All right, Sheila 80s wants to know where she can buy Comfrey. Um, uh Perma Pastures. Yeah, Perma Pastures Farm. Farms. Mr. Billy and them sell. Check, check him out. Uh, I think they have a website called Perma Pasture Farms, or Farm, one no S. Yeah. Um. Have you ever dried and powdered your greens as a supplement to add to recipes or smoothies? I'm not a big no, smoothie we're not, person. No, we're not. We're not smoothie people. There's never been <laughs> nothing not smooth smoothie. about us at all. We're always rough around the edges. So no, we never have done it. Almost 2,000 watching and 87 thumbs up. Okay, so Hills Mills, you may have to refresh, you may need to and refresh. Then see if the counts change. But yeah, you guys hit the thumbs up if you don't mind. Yeah, because that tells YouTube that, that, that we need to be watched here. All uh, right, so ha have you ever, ever tried growing giant crimson tomatoes? Nope, I never have. Well, it jumped really fast, and I didn't touch anything. <laughs> okay, there's uh, Carolyn Moore Smith says, um, Danny, do you think 50% shade cloth is okay for greenhouses in Central Florida? Uh, Central Florida, 50% would probably be pretty good because you're, a little, you're way further south than we are, and we use 40%. Uh, forty percent does really good for us. Uh, so fifty might be okay for you, but we've tried seventy and sixty. It's just not. I mean, it's too much for us. Yeah. All right. So the thumbs up went to seven hundred and twelve. Yeah, that's great. Thank you guys. All right. Um, okay, Danny. Best soil type for potatoes. You for potatoes. You want a uh, you want a heavy rich soil. That drains pretty good, doesn't stay wet, um, but is slightly acidic. Around 5.5 .5 to 5.8, somewhere in that area, is really good for potatoes. Okay, so we're going to show these Miss Emmy. I'm going yeah, to just say Emmy. Okay, we, yeah, don't get she on the last She sent these. Um, this is the journal that we were talking about. I think Danny mentioned them. I'm not sure. Yeah. Where am I at? Right here. The Gardener's Companion 2024 Journal and the 2024 Simple Garden Notebook. The simple one has a calendar on one side and the other side notes. It has in the back where you can do a garden layout in... Can y'all see that? That is... Um, Grid paper? Yeah, grid paper. Yeah, um, you, can, you can lay your garden out based on square foot. In the front of it, it has a All about chart, companion planting and companion all that. Companion planting, things like that. That's in the simple one. And Miss Emmy designed these based on her needs, and she thought other people could use them, so she self-published these things. Uh, this one has a lot more information um, besides what you saw it has seed starting and transplanting all the information you need and you can do and it's got quite a few pages of that um the garden graft notes it's got a bunch of garden graphs and in it the pages are even bigger so you can write a lot of things it has the usda hardiness zone on the back um so we're going to be giving away a couple of these in a few minutes um but thank you, Miss Emmy, for sending these. And if you're interested, uh, Miss Sleeping Nim will be putting a, a link on the to these on Amazon because she did self-publish. She said she thought people would um, 
like to have something like that because yeah. it helped her. I tell you what, I write journals every day of my life. And y'all, if, if you watch the video, you saw where some of the things I write down in my journal. I literally, I, I literally tell people, write a journal down. If you don't do it for nothing else, do it to leave as a legacy for your family. Um, and then if something happens to the weather, uh, like, say for instance, I'm going to give you a uh, quote-unquote uh, hint, hint. Uh, what would you do if all of a sudden the sun started coming up in the west instead of the east? What would you do? How would you garden? Do you realize that the climate of the United States would change drastically? Well, that's why you need to keep a journal. Those of you who are along that eastern seaboard... You might want to pay attention. There's some things fixing to happen. Nana City Garden says, I was laughing the other day when Mr. Danny was talking about his notebook because I was going through my garden notes while watching him. <laughs> <laughs> Danny has multiple journals throughout the years. I buy him one every year for Christmas. And, y'all, he writes down when people come to visit. Um... What else do you? you I mostly write I write their names down because I don't never remember nobody's name. Yeah, we and and he'll go back and he'll say, "Who is so and so that visited? What did they look like?" And I'm yeah. like, mm, "I don't know," <laughs> um, because the first four or five years that we were doing YouTube, we had a lot of visitors, and I go back and look at the pictures and I'm like, "Oh yeah, they did come here. They did." And I, but names and faces don't fit with my on it. And he writes down all kinds of little things. Like, yeah. do you write down if we go to town? or? Yep, I write down if we go to town. I write down if we, if we buy materials, fertilizers. <laughs> See? You know, whatever we buy, I write it down. Um, I thought about taking his journals and just doing a video every day and read about five years worth of journals and read to y'all what he'd said every year. <laughs> <laughs> Some things you might not want to read. Well, the personal stuff I'd probably leave yeah, out. Yeah, I think so. But that. I mean, so that you got, I mean, he did do that in his video. He kind of yeah. showed you a few years and the, what he keeps up with. But um, it is nice. He just writes everything down on a, um, in a note, in a, what is it, a calendar a book. A calendar book, yeah. Yeah, yeah I do. And, um, um Debbie has it right. She says he does it for when he gets old and he can't remember anymore. Yep. That's it. Right there. <laughs> I can go back to my own journals and see what I did. Oh, I forgot to bring... Hold on. I've got to go get something. Oh, okay. Mm. Well, when Miss Wanda's up, we'll see what we got going on here. Oh, Lord. Let me get up here and get my glasses where I can see this thing. Yeah, uh... Don't be surprised if you wake up one morning and the sun comes up in the west instead of the east. That's going to be a that's going to be a, a real big shocker. Uh, a. Bama Gardner says, "Mr. Danny, how did the new weather station do la in last night's weather? It did pretty good. Of course, it didn't get bad here or nothing like that. I mean, you know, it just rained a little bit. That's that's about all." Did you check the overall when you got to it? I hadn't been out. No, I haven't checked. You haven't out. checked overall? I haven't checked overall yet. Okay. Okay. Woo! Miss Wanda got some toys here. Let's see what we got. All right. So over, I think on uh, either Patreon, I believe is where I got this name. Um, and I don't know if she's in the chat or if I, but I'm going to go back over and see and put this on Patreon. But Ron Foster is a Southern, how would I say this? Southern fiction mm -hmm. prepper. Novelist. Novelist. There you he go. writes books, and um, I've read quite a few of them and enjoy them. And this one, the apoc. How do you say that? A what? Say that word. Apocalyptic. Apocalyptic. Yeah. Apoc apoc apothecary. Y'all say that three times. <laughs> uh, that, oh, oh, you're talking about the, the second word? I thought you were talking about the apothecary. first. Apothecary. Apocalyptic apothecary. Yeah, I can't say that all together. <laughs> That's okay. a tongue twister there. So when I put this book up on Patreon, uh, several people just had a fit over it. So um, Country Nana, and I don't know if she's on here as Country Nana, but over there she's on as Country Nana. I'm going to give her one of these, but I have another one. 
Um, we've got, let me find my notes. Where's my notes? Did I not bring it? Yep, I did. All right. Um, the other one is going to Stacy B O Y T Boyt. Boyt. Stacy Boyt. Um, so Country Nana and Stacy Boyt. If both of you will send me an email at deepsouthhomestead at gmail dot com plus uh, a Bama Gardener, I need yours too, and um, that way we will send out. If you'll give me your address, um, Ron also wrote the longest walk. This is the first one of his books I read, and uh, if you've never thought about what would happen if there was an EMP or any reason that the power shut down, it doesn't have to be an EMP, just that the power don't work. Right. Uh, cars don't work. Things don't work. Which is a very big possibility in the near future. And if you had to get home, yeah. do you have the skills you need to get from point A to point B when everybody else is doing it and everybody's panicked? This book explains it. And Ron is in Alabama, I believe, right? Yes. And uh, so he's got a southern write about it. And I can't help but laugh reading it because the characters... And stuff like that, uh, you know somebody like that. But mm -hmm. now he brings a lot of points across here, and um, it's a good read. Plus, it gives you a lot of hints on what to look for. Um, and I'm going to read off some names of people that I picked earlier for, for these books. And um, they can watch the read. If they're not in the chat, they can watch it and come back. Brenda Hall McDonald. And uh, let me find... Tracy, and then it's got T-K-E, T-K-8-G-N behind the name, and then where's the other one? Um, S-E-N-G-E-L-M-O-H-R, S-E-N-G-E-L-M-O-H-R, if you would all send me, and if you get this, because I have to send, send these out next week, all right, and then the other book, Nope, I didn't bring the other one. Hold on. Still forgot She's got one. more books. you got to hold on I here, man. i got a lot of books. Oh, man. Let's see here. Let's see here. What we got going on again? Uh, while Ms. Wanda's talking, I'm trying to read and watch the chat. Yeah, I mean, tell you, you might want to get your EMP shields, guys, because I'm going to tell you, there's some, <laughs> there's some crazy things happening. How long can Danny Corn, uh, this is Aaron Malone, says, How long can Danny Corn be put in the freezer before planting? Uh, you can put it in the freezer forever. It doesn't matter. Um, you can put it in there for one week, two weeks, or five years. It don't matter. It still grows. Okay. I had to look and see if Lippy sent me anything. Okay. Um... Everybody's just congratulating the winners. Let's see here. Okay, so before I go any further on the journals, uh, the Simple Garden Notebook, Creason, K-R-E-E-S-O-N, Creason. The Gardener's Companion Journal, Monkey Mommy. Monkey Mommy. Monkey Mommy. And the Encyclopedia, Debbie McMurtry, or McMurty, Ed Kil. Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick. Wild Turkey. Howard and Renee Robinson. Okay. And uh, we ain't got to the others yet. Okay. Okay. So those are winners. And uh, I'll try to put the winners' names in a pinned comment after I get through it may be an hour because it'll take me a few minutes to get everything done but I'll try to put the winners names and you have until Monday morning to get me an address because if you don't I won't be able to get it out and the next book up Ron Foster's Old Fart Survival Guide now this one I had a lot of people want this over yeah <laughs> everybody's asking <laughs> everybody's about this one. asking for that book this one in the apothecary each one of them was very, I mean, probably as many people wanted the apothecary as they did this one. Now, this one 
Let's see. Uh, yes, EJ. Uh, Lorca, yes, you can get a discount by mentioning about by, by doing Deep South Homestead. We have a link in the description below. Yes. In this book, he tells everything from making traps to gardening, anything uh, you can imagine, guns, knives, snares, uh, fishing, cooking, different ways to cook, uh, how to set up traps anything um survival uh what am i thinking of shelters shelters and yeah. things like that in this book so we'll be naming three people shortly on this one okay diana justice acre says my sweet potato slips are almost three feet long should i trim them back zone 6b you don't have to trim them back just let them go and then when it comes time to plant you can cut them into pieces because at every leaf, it will put on a root. If you'll lay the plants on the ground and put a little dirt on them, they'll root at every leaf. And then when it comes time to plant, you'll be able to pull them up and cut them off in sections and be able to set out all the different sections. Debbie, it's deepsouthhomestead at gmail.com. So y'all just send me addresses, please. All right. Yeah, this is a pretty good book, the uh, Old Fart Survival Guide. It's got a lot of, like, if you were talking to an older mm -hmm. man and he's explaining to you how he survived life in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever, he would be sitting giving you a lot of tips. Yeah, I, love, I wanted, I wanted the old is. book myself because I'm an old fart, you know what I mean? I wanted to see if, <laughs> I wanted to see if it knew more than I knew. And it, it's got a lot of, I mean, even if you were going fishing... And you didn't really have anything much with you. It tells what you can look for around in order to make a hook, make the line, and and or snare or whatever you're gonna do to capture an animal. Yeah. I mean, it's really a survival guide. All right. So. Um, Susan Fisher said, "What's the name of Ron's site?" I I just I, got him off Amazon, but Ron is he may be in Ron the chat. Ron may be in the chat tonight. It's MT MTWR. It's M I don't know. Ron, are you in the chat? If you Ron, are, if you're in something. the chat tonight, <laughs> say something, okay? And tell them where you tell where them, to find. Tell them where to but find. I know you. Amazon. I've got Amazon yeah. links. We have an those. Amazon link you can go to to get them. Okay. Uh, Lippy's putting the Amazon links. Her and Allison. Um, I could write a good book. In fact, when Danny and I married. Uh, I thought, this oh, is the yeah, most this is, peaceful this is... thing in the world, the house and everything. And he was helping his brother some at the time. And so I would get out of college and get to the house, and he was off working. And I thought, I can write a book. It is so peaceful. I have absolutely nothing to do out here. And I was thinking, man, I'm going to have to write a whole series of books because there's nothing to do. <laughs> and within... I don't know, the first month, maybe. Maybe. Uh, he messed his neck up so he couldn't work anymore. And from that point on, it's been, we were gardening, we're doing animals, we're doing infrastructure. I mean, y'all, I couldn't write a book if I had to. I ain't got time. That's it. <laughs> 10 years, 11 years later, and I still hadn't wrote a book. Well, a cookbook. You and wrote two cookbooks. I got two cookbooks and your three manuals. Yeah. So, I have wrote books, but not what I intended. Okay. All right. Okay. How do I do blueberry bushes, the dirt, the fertilize, etc.? That's Tammy Stumpke. Oh, uh, Tammy, Tammy Stumpke. How do I do blueberry bushes, the dirt, the fertilizer, and so on? Blueberry bushes, you want to make sure you have an acidic soil of about 5 or 5.5 pH. Uh... Just like planting any other tree, just dig your hole like twice the size of the bush, put it in the ground. It takes about three years from to have a decent crop on them. If you buy two-year-old trees, which I do suggest doing, pay a little bit more for them, but you get berries the next year. You know what I mean? And uh, and I fertilize mine not the first year, but the second year I plant them. And I do do some pruning back on them the first year. But not much after the second or third year because I wait till they kind of get established and then I begin to do my little pruning on them. Okay, the Mississippi Soldier 369 said, 
Would you suggest young men, men to get in shape? Yes. Well, the fact of the matter is, <laughs> if, man, you're, if you're a young women. man, you should already be in shape. That should, <clears throat> that should be a no-brainer. Uh, uh, but the problem is, nowadays we have so many young men that are not in shape. Uh, They're not even. My daddy would have beat my butt if I, I wasn't in shape. That. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, we uh, old men, old women, young men. Young Everybody women, needs to be in shape. Kids. Uh, if you have kids, I would say instead of letting them play inside on a TV or a game or something all the time. Get them outside. Get them involved in something outside yes. where they're moving. If it's nothing but you walk around your house, if you're in a subdivision or around your you need whatever, to, you need to. They need to be walking. They need to have some exercise because that is detrimental. Right. When we were in school, we were told we had to exercise. Oh, we had day. to exercise. We didn't have a choice. Uh, there was no choice. The school mandated it. Now, see the thing about don't. it is, when we were growing up, we were or I was not allowed to sit in the house. You were not allowed to sit in front of a television and watch stuff. I had to be outside. I had to be working. I had to be accomplishing. Uh, we had chores that had to be done every day. And to be honest with you, at 12 years old, I went to work in a field picking cucumbers because I got tired of doing chores. I said, if I'm going to work, I'm going to get paid. So I went to work for a man, and I worked from age 12 on. I ain't All never right. stopped working. Ron must be in here somewhere. His name is M N L W T R, and it's mineral water. That's what that stands for. And he's probably in here somewhere. But yes, he wrote these books. Yes, he's in our chat quite often. Um, somebody was at. Yeah, there he is. There we are. He said, "What I miss." Well, we're giving away your we're giving books. giving away your books there, dude. Do you have a website or something, or do they just get the books off Amazon? I'm giving the Amazon links out, but if, um, Ron, if you have a website now, tell them about it or something like that. Just kind of, I don't know. If you can't get it to come in, leave the dot .com off and put a space and they can figure yeah. the dot out. Um Let's see, what are we doing? I agree with uh, Me Too Real Too said, a child growing up should be 80% chores and 20% fun. Mm -hmm. Actually, when we were growing up, there was no fun until the chores were done. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you could not play, you could not go anywhere, you couldn't do nothing until them chores was done. Yeah, SR says, I've asked my students if they go outside and play when they get home, and most of them look at me like I'm crazy. Yeah. Uh, yep. Kids don't know how to play unless mama's out there with them, or grandma, lots of times it's grandma out there, or grandpa, or somebody, because they don't go outside by themselves. We've uh, seen that multiple times. You send I a kid outside, and they come I don't right understand. back in. When I was a kid, I didn't want and, to be uh, in the house. I yeah. wanted to be outside. Yeah, we we roamed all over. I mean, the we place. roamed everywhere. <laughs> now I get nowadays it is not safe. I understand that one hundred percent. But if you live in a subdivision, your yard should be safe enough that you can, they can go outside and walk around or play volleyball or or you can put something there where they they're moving. I mean, what was it I told you? They they said a body needs a, to be a body in motion stays in motion. Yeah, it needs to be moving. It needs some. to be moving. Once you sit down and you don't do much, why do you think kids don't do much? It's because their body is not... You can't get them to run. You can't get them to walk. You can't get them to ride a bicycle. Yep. They need to be... And same with older people. Danny and I are learning that, you know, yeah. the older we get, you kind of don't want to do stuff sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I used to and, I used uh, to run like 20 miles and never get tired. Now I can't run nowhere because of my knee messed up and everything. I, I don't... I don't run anymore. Yeah, so, you know, um, the older you get, push yourself. Make yourself get up, walk through the house. Make yourself go from one room to the other just because. Yeah. Hunt I think something. I think most people forget that if they, let's say you're in town and you live, like us, like 12 miles from town. Yeah. And something happened like an EMP or some kind of natural disaster and you couldn't drive home, could you walk 12 miles? 
I mean, the average human walks two miles per hour. Yep. So that's a six-hour walk. And Danny and I have talked about this for years because we know if we were in our town and had to walk home, it, and lots of times we, you know, I, I started making myself wear tennis shoes to town. Used to, I'd wear a lot of sandals and things like that. And I got thinking, if I had to walk home, would these shoes be comfortable? Right. I even put tennis shoes in the truck. We keep extra pairs. Kept extra shoes in the truck in case I happened to be and didn't have the, any tennis shoes on. And um, just little things like that sometimes. I mean, if you had a flat tire and you had to walk, say you were on a country road and you still had another six minutes to get yeah. home, six minutes is still a long walk. Yeah. Because if you're driving not, six minutes, if you're and not walking, in, if you're not different. in shape, six minutes is 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 exhausting. Yeah, because driving six minutes and walking that six minutes is going to take you probably yeah. an hour or better. And so you got to be in shape enough, and that's something that even older people need to be doing. All right. So. Uh, most people saying they hated being inside as a kid. Yeah. If you don't use it, you I'm lose like, it. I'm like, uh, was it Ivana? Ivana says, I get a lot of exercise due to forgetfulness. <laughs> I do the same thing. I, so many times <laughs> I'll take off to go do something. And I go, well, well, why am I, what am I doing <laughs> here? What did I come for? And then I turn around and go back and I go, oh, I know what it was. And then I have to turn around and go back again. Danny's getting bad about it. I, yeah. I've looked at him, I don't know how many times this week. And I said, where is your mind at? He's like. I keep forgetting this stuff, and he'll go, and he is not one I am to forget. Not, I had a photographic memory. I have never in my life forgot anything, hardly, and now I'm getting where I forget. Yeah, he, he's like, uh, he'll pick up everything he needs up, and he'll go to do a chore, and then he gets out there, and he goes, wait, where? And the main thing is the one thing he don't have. Yeah. So, you know. Okay, I see. Wild Turkey says, oops. Uh, I think there's somebody in the chat called oops. Yeah. The one Danny speaks of has supposedly been tested. Uh, it must be talking about the EMP shield. Yes. Yes, I've seen all the inside stuff on the company. Uh, the military has them. Homeland Security has them. Uh, a lot cities of your, a lot of your cities are starting in. to put them in. A lot of police departments are putting them in their cars. SWAT teams have them. I mean, everybody has these things put on their vehicles. Uh, you know and, what I mean? And Mike Smith says EMPs are one and done. Once they've been hit, the second EMP is, you know, I mean. Yeah, that's true. I mean, when an EMP hits, it fries it. You know uh, what I mean? But it protects, it's but a, it protects your house the, or the, your car. The good thing or, about it is there's a $25,000 standalone policy with the one for your home. If your home gets hit by lightning or anything to that nature and it fries anything in the house you get a $25,000 standalone policy they don't have to wait for another insurance policy to pay or anything like it it pays up front okay so somebody asked this question I meant to ask you a while ago uh, they're wanting to know about eating feral hogs or pigs feral pigs are okay to eat it's just that they're going to be uh, you know if you kill a male he's going to have that boar taint or they're going to be tough. You have to realize that. They're, they're best made into just sausage. I mean, be honest with you, there ain't no sense in cutting uh, up all them cuts on them. Just grind the whole thing up in sausage. They're saying that some YouTubers are, are saying that they're, they're tainted or there's something wrong with them or something. I don't know. They're um, like any other creature out there, like deer. Deer have different diseases. I mean, uh, pigs have different diseases. Rabbits have different diseases. All right, Emerald Water Life Homestead. Do you need an electrician to put an EMP on your house? If you are not comfortable with fooling with electricity, then I would suggest yes. But if you're very comfortable with, with putting in two 20-amp single-amp breakers in your, uh, they have to be on your A and B side of your box. If you understand how that circuitry works, then you can install your own. I've installed mine. I've installed them on several other people's houses who bought them. Uh, there's actually, it's very simple to install, but if you're not comfortable with fooling with the electricity, then I would suggest getting a licensed electrician to put it in. Okay. Uh, 
Grandma Prepper 2022 said we eat wild hogs every year here in South Carolina. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people do. Louisiana's bad in those swamp areas to have wild hogs, and people kill them all the time. Um, used to, they were bad around here, but they're not. They used right to be now. a lot here, but I killed them all out. Um, uh, Howard Renee says, check your email to make sure that we sent you our address to the right email. Um, let's see here. All right, so a Telefarms Homestead said they've been eating wild hogs for years and never had any issues. Uh, I've eaten several myself. I've actually killed a lot of them. Uh, and they're an epidemic now. As a matter of fact, the federal government is trying to come up with a way to uh, to help deal with the epidemic of wild hogs, kind of like Australia with the uh, with the rabbits and the camels. Now, believe it or not, camels and goats in Australia have become a a massive issue down there. Okay, uh, Howard and Renee Robinson. Yes, I got your email. Brenda Hall McDonald, uh, Debbie McMurtry, Robbie Little John, is wild turkey, and Lou, which is a Bama gardener. I got all of y'all's. Oh. All right. So one other book we're gonna mention. I'll I'll mention the winners of. Uh, the other books that I had in, in a minute. And please list the book that you're supposed to win. Yes. Uh, Lippy's writing it down. Ooh, but when y'all got that him, book to give away too? Yeah, The Lost Ways. I thought, oh man, they sent us that book? Yeah. This one... Uh, That's an expensive book if you get the whole series. <laughs> yeah. This one is um, just kind of got all kinds of stuff in it like... What is this? What is mask letters? Oh, talking about how to write on, on different things. Yeah. Uh, gardening, cooking. Again, kind of like the uh, old farts books. It's got herbs. Uh, letting the moon guide you when to plant. Um, how to make some shoes for survival. Um, it's just it's just a round. It's just a a world of knowledge. You know, what I mean, it's like. The best, one of the best things that you can come up with for being able to survive. It's just real simple. Real. Uh, a lot of people have um, seen these online and stuff. It's just a collection of knowledge. So um, I'm trying to figure out now which ones I've told and which ones I haven't. Ann Palmer says, we have wild hogs comes on our playgrounds in our rural school. Actually, they're taking over a lot of the cities now. They're beginning to be in, inside the streets or tearing up garbage cans. Uh, the people are getting scared to walk down the streets, not because of hoodlums, but because of hogs. I mean, they're, they're actually um, everywhere. Lippy said the winner went to Messenger, Wanda. What? Uh, she says, winner is sent in Messenger. Yeah, I've got some. Um, oh, for this Lost Ways, uh, Charles McCullough, M C C U L L O U G H. Charles. Charles will, McCullough. Will you please send us an email? Send us an email so we can. And what book it is that you won, which was the Lost, Lost Ways. Ways. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Gardner's companion winner is M Monkey Mommy. Did All I, right. Okay, All so right. I hadn't told about. Okay, what we got going on now? Okay. No, I'm. I've got the um. She was telling me about the old fart Scott. I've got those wrote down. Okay. Okay, so one of these. I don't know that ever, all of these are in the chat, but this came from the um, community post. And one of them is M-O-N-A-N-A, -A, Monana 8706. And um, let me find the other. One of them is Deep South Bama Grits. And the other one is Nadia. Marci Marcicle, Mar I don't know how you, 
N-Y-D-I-A-M-A-R-C-I-A-L. I know she's usually in the chat. 3844. 3844. Okay. Uh, Laura Bosch says, How many worms would you put in a 26-gallon container? I would put about one box of red worms or about 30 to 60. Somewhere between 30 and 60 red worms should be plenty uh, in a 26-gallon container. All right, so I think we've announced most all of them. Have we got, Lippy, have we got through all the books? I don't know. Uh, I think we have. If not, I will give some away on Patreon. If I do not get emails before Monday, I will go over to Patreon and give the others away. Um, Farm boy Eli says, what fruit trees do you recommend for clay type soils? Uh, for clay type soil, really, <laughs> you're gonna need to amend the soil if it's clay type soils. You're gonna really need to do that. Um, but you're gonna need to alkalinize it by adding some lime for sure, and you're gonna need to add some gypsum to it if it's clay type soil. And then any of your apple trees or peach trees or any of that should do pretty good for clay type soils. Nadia, where did where did Nadia go? Nadia. Where did, what did she win? It was right here at the bottom of one of your pages. An old fart survival guide. So make sure you put that in your um, email to me, Nadia. Okay. Let's see if I can get back up here where I can see. Um, clay type soil is tough to deal with. That's exactly right, monkey mama. Okay. Uh Beverly McMichael. Beverly Michael. To add worms to my raised beds, I go after the rains and pick up worms that have come to the surface on concrete, yes. Put them in a container and then yeah. Oh. Let's see here. Do you put worms in your raised beds? If so, how many? That's yes, John I, Ellis. I put worms in all my raised beds. I go to the uh like you can go to Walmart, anywhere like that. I go to the bait shop. And I get the uh, red wigglers. They come in little, little small containers, about 30 to 50 in a box. And I put one per raised bed. Okay. And they usually do pretty good. Is a deer getting into my corn? Not yet, because I had to <laughs> replant it. It didn't all come up. Danny's little dog things oh. are Those working, things are, maybe. They're but working they're right now. They're annoying as all get out if you ride uh, past them. <laughs> Yep. We're used, so used to being on the property and riding around and doing what we want. And when you go past him, it's ruff, 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 ruff. No, he's, uh, it's, it's, like, it's a lot more than that. It's a deep. It sounds like a wolf. Yeah, and yeah. then it's shooting Somebody's guns. Somebody's shooting a gun. <laughs> sounds like a small war and bad dogs. Um, so people are putting up their prayer request. Um Let's Will the water purifier remove drugs from the water? Ronald Hagen says. Uh, I believe it's supposed to because Will it mentions it remove what? drugs. I think it Don't mentions know. the different drugs and the different, um, what do they call it? They, they don't say the word drug. They, no. they use the word uh, paraphernalia or something like that. I, I don't know. Um, Danny, what blackberry type do you grow? Marshall Farms. Freedom Blackberry. Hey, Marshall Farms. Uh is that Lane? That's Lane. What? Lane? Lane? Is that you, Lane? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Freedom Blackberry is probably the most prolific blackberry we've ever grown, and they get so big and so huge. So Nancy Plank says, do you put worms in your high tunnels? Yes. We put worms in every container, everything we do. All right. Blessings always said they bought a bag of worm castings. So how would they use them? Use them just like fertilizer. You just um, sprinkle it around your plants and kind of fork it into the ground a little bit around them and then put your plant in it and plant it. Okay. Use it just like compost. All right. So Mar oh, how do you cook? Marty, Marty Cartledge says, how do you cook your patty pan squash? The best way I found to cook patty pan squash is to Slice it long ways through it, like a, where it looks like a big giant pancake. Batter that joker up real good and just fry it. That is the absolute best way to cook the patty pan squash. In my opinion, now. 
All right, uh, let's see. Can parsnips be grown in the South? Uh, not, not really well in the South. They, they, they'll grow in the fall, but not in the summertime. They just don't grow real well here. Pastor Scott, why not? Strawberries in the ground or in a raised bed? Strawberries do better in a raised bed, but make sure you put the straw over them and provide plenty of nitrogen and plenty of water, Scott. All right. Um, Joe Mama asked, where do you buy those mini cucumbers? All right, those came from Vigo Garden Beds. Um, those metal raised beds that we have, they have a whole supply of other things other than garden beds. Uh, and one of them is they're trying to get into plants, and they have quite a few plants, but they have a Kitchen Minis series. And so I'm trying it, and I have little bitty cucumbers on the cucumber, and I've got blooms on the tomatoes and the peppers already. So yeah. we're going to see. We'll see how it turns and, out. And um, one thing that they do have at Vigo Garden is I put this over in a community post on, I think, on Deep South YouTube. And I think I put it over on Pecan Grove community post. Um, they have a academy. So you go on there, it's an online thing where you can go look and there's all kinds of videos and papers and things to look at that helps you learn how to use the beds and fertilize and all that and grow in them. Uh, Ronald Hagen says, do you and Wanda eat fish? Yes, we love fish. Matter of fact, Wanda yeah. was wanting some. Lippy made me want fish yep. last night because she cooked fish. So she, put, she cooked fish, yes. yeah. So Danny's going to be taking me to get fish. We do have fish in our pond, <laughs> but uh, we've been so busy we hadn't went out and caught any. I think it's fixing to warm up enough we could catch fish. Yeah. Uh, but then I got to cook it, so I like to eat fish that somebody else has cooked. But uh, Eggplants. Bugs are horrible. Any advice? Okay, there. That is um, seldom. That's what it looks like. Okay, seldom. Plant radishes around your eggplants but do not harvest the radishes let them go to seeds and flower just leave them and just let them go till they die uh they they repel that's a flea beetle that's actually eating the holes in your eggplant leaves more than likely and it does repel the flea beetles so you don't have to use any chemicals all right um and Miss Allison, one of our um, moderators, she she ordered the mini plants for her grandson, and she had a a great idea. Instead of all this candy in an Easter basket, she's doing mini plants for him so that he can learn to grow his own little veggies. So I thought that was a cute idea. Catfish, yeah, somebody said it. <laughs> Hush eight puppies. Inch cat, eight inch catfish ain't big enough for me. I love catfish. Oh, I know. Debbie said. Miss Lippy cooked some fish and hush puppies and french fries and it looked good. Mm. Helen says, Danny, what kind of soil for potted up for citrus trees and what kind of fertilizers? Uh, the fertilizer is just a well balanced fertilizer like 10, 10, 10, 20, 20, 20, you know, something like that. Uh, we just, in ours, we just planted two citruses, the uh, Arctic Frost uh, mm -hmm. Satsumas. And I just use regular soil from my land, about 50% that, and 50% Schultz potting soil with the time-release fertilizer in it. Okay. Um, Kayla Lowry, mm. hey. Hey, you Kayla. Doing? How y'all doing? She said, do you think we'll get another frost or are we out of the woods? She said she don't see anything for the next we, two weeks. Girl, we should be out of the woods. If what, all the information I'm getting, we're out of the woods. But. Keep your eyes I open. mean, there's there's no guarantees, but I've talked to nursery people, uh, my friend Mark from Weatherman Plus, and two or three other weather situ channel things that you want to call them that. Uh, everybody's telling me we're out of the woods. Seems really early for eggplants. It's according to where you're at. It all um, depends on where you're at. We've we bought some plants because we just didn't get a lot of seed started. And we're going to start, we put in direct sow some things in ground. But um, Danny bought, what, 12 eggplants? Yeah, I bought 12 of them. Yeah. yeah. 
and we've already planted them in the vego beds and um we i planted from seed last year and they didn't come up for what a month maybe longer and i planted yeah. in the ground and then all of a sudden they popped up and we got quite a few i think maybe two or three plants lived mm. Uh, yeah, something so like I that. So I got quite a few eggplants last year, direct sowing, but I direct sowed too early, but they did come up. I don't know what uh, kind of question this is, but Oops says, will EMP shield work on a human body? Uh, EMP doesn't affect the human body. Um, even if you have a pacemaker, I talked to them at the EMP shield company, and they said that an EMP really wouldn't even affect a pacemaker, the battery in a pacemaker. So, uh, it actually has no effect on the human body. It's not designed to affect the human body. It's only designed to fry electronics and electrical components. Uh, but now, I will say this. There are now two new types of EMP uh, bombs. Uh, oh, you shouldn't have said that word. I shouldn't have said that. Dad, gum it. No, two, two things. There are two different types of these blasters. Uh <laughs> <laughs> that have been developed worldwide. Um, so there is some unknown things about those two that's not out there yet. Um, so all I can't. Bets are like, all bets are off on that one, you know. <laughs> we'll all be but, in the same boat if something happens. That's yeah. just what I look at it. Uh, Danny, how to deal with fire ants in <laughs> potato hills? That's Fawn Grove Homestead. Put slips in the ground a week ago. Now the fire, fire ants are, are everywhere. everywhere. Look, uh, Fawn Grove Homestead, if I truly had the answer to that, I would be a multimillionaire by now. I mean, but they're that, starting to pop up. They're starting to pop here. up everywhere here. The only thing I know is the more you mess with them, it aggravates them. And I have learned that if you stomp the bed down or take a two before and just pound it in the ground and keep doing that day after day, and lots of times they move. Let me move his hand. He's messing with my head with this. Every time he talks, his hand moves and it messes with this. All right, so it, somebody asked something here. Um, time changed tonight. Yep, yes. time changes tonight. Yep. What was the large book you showed earlier? Uh, which That's one? That's uh, Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia of Country Living. That's probably it, this one. That's the, only, that's the largest book we showed. The best book out there is out there for anybody, really, if you want knowledge on anything. Yeah. To do with it. I mean, you can, how to make a, let's see, what does it say? Make fruit leathers, plant a tree, cope with weeds and pests, build irrigation systems, tap a maple tree, can dry and preserve food, birth piglets, calves, and lambs, harvest wood, bake your own bread. I mean... It co covers up everything. Yes. Um, let's see here. The, um, Where you at? Uh, Ode More Rock says... One more. One More Rock says, Danny, can indeterminate tomatoes be made to be determinate tomatoes? Uh, not to my knowledge, they cannot. Uh, unless you was to cross-pollinate them some way. Uh, that's the only thing that I could think of, but that's not very likely. Okay. All right, so we've, we're way past our time anyway. Okay, Ron says, I ask about fish because, fish because Danny mentioned worms in some fish. Mostly, uh, Ron, that's mostly saltwater fish. If you catch a saltwater fish like a flounder or something like that and lay him out on a hot sunny day out there you'll actually watch him when he lays there for a while worms will just come crawling out of him everywhere okay so um i'm gonna try and put all the winners names in a pinned comment in the uh, comment section after this post after a while so that if if somebody didn't see it they'll come back later okay okay we got we, we, we're running way over time here yes <laughs> oh Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you tonight. And Father, thank you for the thank you for the good chat tonight we've had with all of our friends and stuff here, Lord. And uh, and I pray tonight that if any of them's facing any kind of severe weather or anything like that, that you'll be with them through that. And uh, I want to stop and thank you that you didn't allow it to come through where we were at. We just got a good 
gentle rain and it really blessed our land. Uh, and for those that, uh, I noticed a lot of them had a lot of serious requests tonight. A lot of them had uh, some different surgeries that was going on and some of them was um, dealing with cancer and different things of this nature, Father, and asking for prayers for family and grandsons and grandchildren and all kinds of things, Lord. And Father, too many for us to actually sit down and mention them, every one. But Lord, we know you saw the whole chat tonight and we're asking that you, uh, you meet the people's request, Father. If they were faithful enough to step out and to ask for a prayer request, I'm asking, Lord, that you would meet their faithfulness with your with your honesty and, and your sincereness and and re grant them their request, Lord. Uh, not that they might consume it upon their own lust, but that they might be able to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. We know in the scriptures you've told us that there were once many of many many were healed at one time, and and at the end only one came back to to thank you. And Lord, that seems to be the the norm for most things in the world today. People forget where their blessings come from. And and I pray, Lord, that we never become that, that lackadaisical that we actually forget where our blessings come from, but that every moment of our life, we stop and we take time to give thanks to you for all that you do for us on a daily basis. I know every day of my life, Father, all I do is I'm constantly praising and thanking you for giving as much as you give to us so that we're able to turn around and bless others with the things that you've blessed us with, Father. And I do pray that you bless us, that we might be a blessing to those around us now. Thank you for the people who are here tonight. We love them. We appreciate them. We pray for them. And Lord, I just ask that you grant their request tonight now. I ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. And I want to thank all of Woo. you guys for helping us throughout the years here at Deep South Homestead and now at Pecan Grove at Crazy Days and All God's Children. Yes. Uh, Danny doesn't post on All God's Children, has it in several Haven't years. Haven't in several years. There's a few videos over there. Uh, he's pretty much been saying what he wants to say on porch time. Uh, when he started All God's Children, he didn't think he could say what he needed to say on porch yeah, time. Yeah, really, I didn't think I and could. He realized that it's easier for him just to incorporate what he needs to say into porch time. Uh, I started Crazy Days and was doing videos over there. I haven't done anything in about a year, but um, just don't have time. And uh, so we're gardening at Pecan Grove, and we ask that you guys not only subscribe to Deep South Homestead, but to go over to Pecan Grove. Uh, most of our gardening is over there. Yes. And so we decided to keep that separate from Deep South Homestead. And we will be doing some videos at Deep South, some at Pecan Grove, but mainly porch time mm. and our lives are on Deep South and whatever else we're doing over there. <laughs> oh, Four Day Homestead said, God answered a prayer request for a job lead. Yes. Praise be to the Lord. See, this is how you get results from the from God is when you acknowledge that God has blessed you and you give him the praise and the honor and the glory and he'll just continue opening up doors. Abama Gardner says, Amen. God bless everyone here and special blessings to our host. Thank you so much for the gift. You're welcome, we, we, you're, we're, you're You're more than welcome. You are more than welcome. Okay. Everybody wants to know... Um, let's see, seated at the table, Danny, visit my farm page, please. Okay, I'll have to remember that, seated at the table. Do you have a tip, or have you forgotten? Do I have a tip? Well, y'all probably don't want to hear my tip tonight, but I want you to listen to what I have to say, because it's sincere, it comes from the heart. Uh, I got to watch how I say this one. Um, <laughs> he hadn't told me, so I have no clue. In the very near future, and when I say very near future, I mean like before uh, before we all go to cast our you-know-what in November. Check mark. Uh, put that check mark out there, you know? Do your best to stay out of large crowds of people. 
Don't go to places where there's long lines of people. Don't go to places where there's hundreds of people in one building or one or thousands of people in a particular place. If you can, stay clear of these places because sources say that there's already been briefings to particular branches that they're looking for something and that uh, the same things that's been happening across the water in these foreign countries about people who strap these things on them and then they detonate stuff is yeah. coming to America <laughs> and it's not going to be that far off. They're already here. They're already making plans to start doing that. As a matter of fact, those of you who watched my porch time probably a couple of weeks ago, I told you that they was going to start using security guards and grocery stores and the law was going to start being everywhere. And now they've brought in the National Guard is in the, all the subways in New York and all kind of different places like that. And guys, I told you this was coming. I also told you that Texas was going to catch on fire and burn. That has come to fruition. I've told you that California is going to be flooded and burn at the same time. Those things have come to fruition. Uh, please understand, do not get in big groups. Uh, the things that bother me are like large gatherings of church people. Um, people who go to grocery stores and there's long checkout lines. People who go to ball games. I'm not uh, saying don't I'm go. I'm not telling you don't go, but I'm telling pay you attention. if you do go, please understand that there's there's going to be the possibility that there might be one of those people there. Um, because like I said, many branches have already been briefed that this is going to happen and that they're also watching the grid system really, really tight. Because they're highly expecting something to happen to the grid. So, that's... And... I, got, I can't say the other part. But uh, anyway, that, uh, that that's my tip for tonight. Just be careful where you go. Pay attention. And pay attention times. To, to where you're at in your surroundings. And be aware that any moment, one of those people could just, you know, detonate. And something. Something, including themselves. Because the more people that they take out... And the, it's not just big cities. No, it's not just big cities. It's, it's anywhere, there's large, even, anywhere there's large gatherings of people. It might be small towns. You don't ever know. Yeah. Tracy, I did get your email. Thank you. Um, so I've got several emails already. Um, so just... All right, so that that's my tip for tonight because we got we got we got word of this this past week that there had been briefings to all the the branches out yeah. there. I'm, I'm using the word branches because y'all can figure and out what I'm talking about. Serenity sealed is right. Walk in faith and not in fear. Keep your yeah. eyes open because lots of you have to go to the hospital. You have to go to a doctor's office. You have to go buy groceries. Uh, some of you have grandkids that's playing ball or or kids that's playing ball and things yeah. like that when you go places just pay attention pay attention uh, don't don't, don't if, be doing this if there's a large group of around. people like if you go to a ball game and there's just large groups of people be the one who's different be the one who kind of stays stays away from the big crowds and kind of hangs over next to the sideline or something like that so that if something does happen you're not in the middle of it because if something happens, it's going to happen in the center of whatever's going on. Yeah. And and another thing, keep your. I told y'all this a while back. Keep your eyes to the skies. And I I can't go into detail about that, but I'm just telling you, keep your eyes to the skies. And there is word out there floating around that something's going to happen with the jet stream. Um. So. I can't go into detail about it because I'm liable, they're liable to say something. Yeah. Uh, but 
they're they're saying that there there is something going to happen to the jet stream, and it's they're saying it's not that far off either. Yeah. All right, so we have got to go. Yes. And got a few things to do before bedtime, and uh, I'm gonna try and put all the winners in a pinned comment. So thank you guys. And look, for... don't uh, before you get off here, don't get caught up in this eclipse thing, okay? Uh, now there's there's a lot to that eclipse. Let me tell you something. A, I forgot how long it's been since there's been a total. I remember when I solar was a eclipse. Kid. No, nope, no, I'm talking about a solar, a oh, total solar the, eclipse that only crossed the U.S. Oh yeah, you're talking. I was gonna say I, I mean, remember. It's been a, it's a, been when, when a we long, kids. long time. Yeah. And the thing about this that's going to be so bad is there's so many groups of people that's gathering up in large groups and places. That's not a good idea. Yeah, because they're they're expecting lots of people in. Where was that at? I, what state? Uh, is it? I don't. I saw it yesterday, uh, and I can't remember. I remember you telling me. And I said, "What are they doing?" Because Arkansas. It, was it Arkansas? Wasn't it Arkansas? Maybe. It's either Huckleby. Ar Huckleby. Yeah. And she the. It's. I think it's in Arkansas. It might be. Anyway, she was saying something about. Because they were bringing in the, bringing the, the in state all, troopers and national guard. And I'm guard like, what and, just happened there? But they're and getting Danny ready. And said, no, they're getting ready for this eclipse thing. And I said, why? And he said, because everybody wants to be there. They want to be. Maybe it's. Was it Arkansas? It's Arkansas or Indiana. I can't. I don't remember. know. I don't remember. It's one in, of the Some other. of them say in Indiana. I don't know. I think it's Arkansas. Texas. I think it's some Arkansas. Some people saying, yeah, Arkansas. Uh, I don't know. I just remember seeing, yeah, Arkansas is supposed to get 1.5 million people. people. Do you want to be in the middle of 1.5? Right. Do you want to be where <laughs> that many people is? I mean, uh, it's it's. And I know, like Ozark at, they're already there. Where are they going to go? That's their home. Do they right. want a million people flopping around their home somewhere? Yeah. It's, oh, um, y'all have to be careful. I mean, it's. Guys, I pray for y'all. I, I do. I do pray for anybody who's in the path of all this craziness up there. Um, but there is so much. Um, there's so much going on that literally, it's it's scary. We're we're at scary times now. I told Wanda. There's word floating around out there that this. There this election is not going to turn out good. I don't care if the left wins. I don't care if the right wins. It doesn't matter which group wins. It's not going to be good because if one wins, the other one's going to going to riot. If one the other if one if one of them wins, the other one's going to riot. Uh, so we're looking at a divided nation no matter who wins. And when that happens, it's just it's just not going to be good. It's not going to be good, guys. Yeah. And to, like Miss Debbie said, you know, you might catch COVID or some, some other or something. Uh, seemed like when at Christmas, Danny and I just went to Walmart. We just went to Walmart for sick. the first time in God knows how long. And, and we both got sick. So you can get it wherever you go. You just got to be very vigilant and keep some hand sanitizer and don't touch a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes just breathing it, you know, walking by somebody that already has something, just be careful. And um, but think about it is don't get caught up in this too much because, uh, how to say this, um, is the eclipse going to make a difference in anything? The, the eclipse is not going to change anything. That's okay? what I was thinking. But this is this is the bottom line right here, and this is what I want you to pay attention to. In the scriptures, there is a a dead direct warning about any anyone who divides the land of Israel. The scripture plainly teaches that whoever divides the land of Israel, that land itself will be divided. And if America steps in and says that the Gaza Strip has to be given to the Palestinians and create another nation, 
and as part of this dividing of the land of Israel, then America will be divided one way or the other. So let's pray that we don't get involved in this thing any more than what we already are. and Let them people deal with their own stuff over there. And I will say this, that the only way that Israel can be attacked or overthrown by any other country, because the Bible says they're going to be trodden underfoot for 40 and two months, the only way possible that that can, be, that that can happen is if the United States has been done away with. Because right now, we are Israel's only ally out there in the world. And we have agreed to stand by them no matter what. And the whole world knows that. So the only way Israel can be attacked, a full-fledged attack, is if the United States has been disabled to the point where we cannot come in and help them. And if the scriptures is accurate, which I believe it is, and Israel's going to be trodden underfoot for 40 and two months, the United States will cease to exist as a nation. We will have had a something. powerful nation. I'm not to say we won't be here, but yeah. we won't have the ability to go and to help another nation because we will be trying to figure out how we're going to survive our own self over here, which means that we have been internally destroyed. The Trojan horse is in America today. Okay, it's already here. And we're just waiting for the door to open. That's all we're waiting on. It's not if it's going to happen. It's when it's going to happen. Yeah. Okay, so thank you guys for joining us. And thank you for um, helping us get this far close to the 300,000. We Maybe we'll hit it next weekend. If we do, next weekend will be when we give away our bigger gifts. And uh, if not, it'll be the weekend after or the weekend after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something like that. So thank you for stopping by and listening to a long-winded. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm passionate. When I get going on something, I could just keep, I could keep going for hours. Really? He would. And I would. And Nadia, I probably did. But let me check right quick since she asked. Um... I think you said you got it. I don't remember who I told I did. Yes, Naughty, I did. Yes, I remember you saying it. Okay. Because she said to check. That no, was somebody else, but yeah. I got it too. All right, guys. We appreciate y'all, and we'll see y'all on Pecan Grove and Deep South. Yes. Thank you, guys. Mm, this one first. Yep, that one.